going to come in. Three. This acetyl CoA is going to come in. And once the acetyl CoA has come in, CoA is going to be released and you will have this requires water it's catalyzed by a synthase and it will lead to formation of HMG CoA this is beta hydroxy beta methyl glutarate CoA that is being synthesized. So this enzyme is abbreviated as hydroxymethylglutarate CoA synthase. Being a synthase brings in water, the hydroxyl group is formed there. There is a methyl group, and we have our CH2. S CoA and the CoA comes off. This reaction is the rate limiting reaction of ketone body synthesis and it's catalyzed by hydroxymethylglutarium CoA synthase. The end product is beta, because it's the beta carbon, is beta. Okay, missed out something. Because it's this CoA, this is coming out, so it's CH2. There. This is alpha beta carbon. So this is beta hydroxy, beta methyl glutarate CoA. This is the product of the enzyme hydroxymethyl glutarate CoA synthase. This reaction is the rate limiting reaction for ketone body synthesis. Alright? Once the hydroxymethylglutyl CoA has been produced, the next reaction is that this hydroxymethylglutyl CoA is actually going to be worked upon by a LIS called hydroxymethylglutyl CoA. Lies. What this enzyme will do, it will remove an acetyl CoA. So acetyl CoA goes off. CH3 CoA. This goes off, and the end product is. going to be aceto acetate and if you have been waiting guys this is the first ketone body aceto acetate is a ketone body so we are going to see three ketone bodies we have seen one the reason why I mentioned that acetoacetyl CoA is not a ketone body is because their names are quite similar, right? And their structures are not very different. Now, this is a ketone body, it has a carboxyl group there, and this makes it acidic and polar as well. So, acetoacetate is the first ketone body that is produced. And this is a functional ketone body which can be used in peripheral tissue for production of energy. It will go in the blood, carried into the blood, taken to peripheral tissue, be used to produce acetyl CoA, and hence be used as a source of energy. I must tell you that ketone bodies become a very useful source of energy for most tissue, especially in circumstances of starvation. Also, when the concentration rises large enough, rise enough, 
following starvation, ketone bodies are also used as a source of energy for the brain. Just to tell you, the brain may use ketone bodies as a source of energy when they rise in concentration enough. Now we are aware of the fact that the brain predominantly uses glucose as a source of energy. We should know that ketone bodies as well can be used as a source of energy for the brain. This is acetoacetate. This is your first ketone body. Alright? Two more to come. One comes in speedily by spontaneous decarboxylation of acetoacetate. This carbon dioxide comes off and you have your other ketone body. Let me just remove the name here so that it doesn't confuse anyone. You have your second ketone body. This is called acetone. Acetone is also a ketone body. So we have seen the second ketone body. This ketone body is not necessarily a functional one because once acetone has been produced, this is a very volatile ketone body that can actually be carried through the blood, taken into the lungs and excreted to the brain. So this ketone body is not used for energy generation like this one is. Acetone is breathed out as a way of excretion. And this is why in circumstances where somebody has starved for a very long time, you, they tend to have an acetone breath, which is referred to as a fruity breath. It's because of the acetone that follows ketone body production. In the same sense, people with type 1 diabetes, they tend to produce acetone in their breath and they tend to have a fruity breath due to high amounts of acetone being excreted through their lungs. So this is the second ketone body, acetone. It's not a ketone body used for energy generation. It won't move into the blood, go to peripheral tissue for production of acetyl CoA. It will not. However, it is going to be excreted immediately through the lungs. That's the first ketone body produced from acetoacetate. The other ketone body <coughs> produced is going to be produced by reduction of acetoacetate. This is reduced by an NAD linked dehydrogenase. So this NADH linked dehydrogenase is going to reduce acetoacetate to beta hydroxybutyrate. This here, guys, is beta. Hydroxy butyrate. This is the third ketone body. This is a ketone body, that is a ketone body, and that one is a ketone body. Beta hydroxy butyrate, acetoacetate, and acetone are ketone bodies. The enzyme is beta hydroxy butyrate dehydrogenase, and it makes sense that acetoacetate gets reduced to beta hydroxybutyrate. Why? Because you have a high amount of NADH in this circumstance of starvation coming from beta oxidation. So this NADH is going to reduce the acetoacetate into beta hydroxybutyrate as well. So these two are going to be 
the predominant ketone bodies are available while this one is excreted to the lungs. This is how ketone bodies are produced and these ketone bodies are produced in the liver. There. Now, how are these ketone bodies going to find themselves in peripheral tissue and be used as a source of energy? So these ketone bodies are going to be carried through the blood and because they are acidic in nature, their concentration is going to be high in the blood, maybe to as high as 90 milligrams in a day would be available in the blood if somebody extremely starts when it's supposed to be less than 3 milligrams a day. They would be carried in the blood and since they are acidic in nature, they are able to protonate and would lead to a reduction in the pH of the blood. A high amount of ketone bodies in the blood is referred to as ketosis. And when they become so high, you start seeing them even being excreted in the urine, which you call ketonuria. This is common in people that are diabetic, and this is why it's called diabetic ketosis or diabetic ketoacidosis. Because you have a lot of acetoacetate and beta hydroxybutyrate available in the blood of people that are diabetic. So, like we said, these ketone bodies are going to be carried through the blood and will be taken to peripheral tissue where they are going to be used as a source of energy. Being polar, they will be easily carried through the blood and they will reach peripheral tissue where they are going to be taken up and be used to produce acetyl-CoA and that acetyl-CoA can be used in peripheral blood, in peripheral tissue rather, when somebody is stuffed as a source of energy. So this process of ketone body synthesis happens in the liver. What about the breakdown? I heard somebody is going to ask me why won't these ketone bodies be broken down again in the liver? and be used as a source of energy there. Well, the reason is simple. The liver is lacking a very essential enzyme for the breakdown of these ketone bodies, which I'm going to show you soon. So guys, this is about ketone.